Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I am just going to be messing around and so this is basically just an over your shoulder video so we'll see what we make today and hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you learn a few things so what I'm basically got in my head to do is that I'm going to be using the technique that's kind of been going around all over Facebook for the last few months or so um, by the time you view this it's probably not doing it anymore but it's basically a technique where somebody takes a piece of string dips it in some sort of paint or ink I'm not quite sure yet I haven't done that sort of research because I'm not um, actually doing that part of the technique but it basically dips it into some sort of pigment and then drapes it over the, a piece of paper places something over it and then pulls to create almost like a lily pattern now I've been playing around with that and I haven't quite got that technique right yet but I was wondering uh, what it would be like if I tried it on the clay almost as a texture. So that I'm going to be playing around with today. So what I'm going to do is I've just got a sheet of plain pearl white here that I'm going to be using and I'm just busy trying to get this to fold in the direction that I want it to but I guess it just doesn't want to go in that direction so I've got a nice piece long piece of string and if you're wondering what that scraping noise is the cat wants to come in there we are so I'm just going to drape it like that pat it down and I'm just going to bring over a heavy book or just something like this I'm going to place it over and gently press. I'm not pressing down really hard, I'm just holding it here. And I'm just going to start pulling the string. Now be careful of rope burn. I've burnt myself a few times doing this. So just be careful that you don't hurt yourself because you don't want to do that. Okay, and I'll lift that up. And you can see that it's created a pattern. Now I'm not as happy as I could be with that pattern so I'm going to play around with it a little bit more until I come up with a pattern here that I like okay so here is what it looks like let me pop my cardboard piece down and start pulling and then we'll see what it looks like hopefully this one turns out better there we go yeah, I like that much better. Okay, so now what I want to do is all of these areas that kind of uh, lifted up, I'm just going to gently brush those away. Okay, but I'm trying to keep that texture. Okay, now I'm going to trim away this end here because I'm not quite happy with that. And I'm going to trim away these sides so that I just have a certain amount of clay so that I'm not going to be, you know, using up a whole bunch. Okay. Now I'm going to bring over some alcoholics. Okay. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 99% alcohol. And I'm just going to... Douse my piece in that. Then I'm going to take some teak wood and go open that away from my clay because sometimes you get little crumbly bits. And I'm going to just drop that down. And I'm going to take my brush very gently, I'm going to brush this over, and we'll see what happens. Now the thing with the alcohol that we sprayed before we did this is it means that I can brush this around and it's really just going to give it a nice wash. It's not going to stick in any area, it's not going to stain too much. And then I'm going to just blow it off. There we go. So I'm blowing away the excess. Okay. 
and I'm just going to brush over again quickly. Now I'm going to bring over some rust. And some sunset orange and some terracotta. And now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bring over a block of wood that I've just wrapped in a wet wipe. Old dry wet wipe. It's a nice way to use up some of my stuff that I've already put to use. I'm just going to drop these alcohol inks onto it. Just like this. And we'll see what happens. Okay. Then I'm just going to take that And so that's what it looks like. So this texture isn't really showing up all that well. So I'm going to try something else. I'm just going to pop that aside and I can use it later. Something else. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly close up all of my alcohol ink bottles because I don't want um, any accidents. And I'm going to bring over another piece of pearl white. And I'm actually going to bring over a piece of hemp. And this is quite a nice, thick, um, string. And actually, I'm not going to do that yet. What I want to do is I want to first dab my alcohol ink on this. So I'm putting some tea quid in there. First I want to dab my alcohol ink on here. And then I'm going to... drag my string across it. Okay, here we are. Close up your alcohol ink bottle. You don't want to leave those lying around. And I'm just blowing to let it dry quickly. And I'm just going to bring over the string that we had before. So never mind the hemp. Just grab that on and I'm going to drape it around. I'm gently going to tap it as I go because the nice thing about these alcohol inks is that it will allow you to stick this down gently without putting any texture in really because this alcohol ink's fairly sticky. Okay, here we are. Bring over our book again. Gently going to place that on and hold down as I pull my string. There we are. Let's see how that came out. Ah, I see that's much better. That's highlighted the texture much better. Now we've got a little dab off over here that didn't work. So I'll just bring over my alcohol ink. Gently dab that area. And I'll dab around here as well. And I'm careful not to get it on my texture. I'm just lightly dabbing around the edges here. But there you go, see that highlights. Because we dragged the alcohol ink off basically, it now means that this texture is better highlighted compared to this one, where we basically did it, um, where we did it before we put the alcohol ink on. So that's definitely the way to go. 
Okay, so I quite like that. So I'm just going to pick that up. Just trim off these edges here. and clean and here let me show you that now what we can do also is we can probably uh, wait for this to dry and when it's dry you could probably flatten it out so I'll do that after uh, this is dried of course to see if it does work because the nice thing about it is that when you drag the alcohol ink off you kind of drag a little bit of the alcohol ink with you and so it's kind of highlighted those veins. So I might just bring over this wet wipe, which I used. And I'll just take it off the wooden block. I'm gently going to brush it over the texture here. Just to highlight those lines a little bit more. And I'm being very careful. There we go. Okay. Just a little bit down there. There. So that when you flatten it, you'll be able to see those lines. So let's see. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to put that aside and clean up here. So while that's drying, I want to create something to go along with it in a pendant. So I've got this texture stamp and this is my Enchanted Roots texture stamp. And I've also got a piece of white. Now I've dusted this lightly with cornstarch already. So I'm just going to pop that on and press down over here. It doesn't matter if my stamp, get, the back of my clay here gets a little dirty as I do this. And I'm just making sure that I really get it into those textures. And I'm going with kind of a woodland theme, theme here since the other technique has always reminded me of some sort of a lily. Really does just remind me of that. So since that worked, I'm now carrying on and I'm making something to go with it. And so we will see how that goes. Should turn out really nicely because I actually know what I'm planning to do here. So the other one was more of an experiment. Now we're kind of just taking that experiment and we're going to turn it into something nice. Okay. So then I'm just gently going to peel up from all the edges here. And you just want to go slow with this. Slowly, slowly lift it up. The thing is, these polymer clay stamps um, are a little bit more, but they like to grab the clay a little bit more than the other stamps on the market. They come up with some really nice textures. So there we are. That is our texture. And if you're wondering what that noise is in the background, it's the cat. It's raining today, so she's inside. It's better than leaving her outside. Okay. So I've decided with that lily, I'm actually going to leave it flat. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I don't want to flatten it out. Because I'm going to keep this as a texture as well. So I'm going to give a light spray over the top of this. And then I'm going to grab my teak wood, which was my base for the other one. And I'm just going to drop that into here. And bring over my brush and just start brushing it over. Now the reason I put that alcohol on before I do this is because it just means that it's easier to spread the alcohol. It doesn't dry so quickly. So you'll be able to use less of your alcohol ink. Okay, and just try to get an even distribution. You don't want these big um, dark areas in one area and then light in the other. 
If you're going to have dark, make sure it's all over the place. Okay, then I'm just going to bring over a wet wipe once I'm done. Just missed an area there. And I'm going to dab it dry. There we are. And that will just soak up the liquid. I'm gently going to brush the tops now as well. Just to get rid of some of the staining on the top. And give it a more antique look on the bottom. There you go. So it highlights the roots quite nicely for you. Okay, then I will bring over that block of wood again. Along with the wet wipe. So let me just... Grab that quickly. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to be using more browns this time. So I'm going to be popping some ginger on. I'm going to dab each of these on individually. There we go. Dabbing that ginger on. And don't press hard when you're doing this because you only want to be getting the top parts of the roots. Okay, dab a little bit of the ginger. Oops. Now put some terracotta. Dab that on. some of the rest and now I'm trying to get the areas that I haven't already gotten for this nice red colour so I'm going for the tops of these roots to be kind of red and the bottom has that kind of um, yellowy brown colour okay so I'm happy with that we just close those up quickly Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop this off to the side. Now by the way, I was working on white. So what I want to do is I actually want to split this in half. Because I like this side the best for that one. So that's one bit. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a mixture, which is gold. And I'm going to give this a really good shake. Test that, yeah. And I'm just get dab that on the tile. Yeah, that will look good. Okay, so I'm going to bring over those red alcohol links again, but this time I'm going to leak them into those roots, and I'm going to just brush over so that we give it a really red coloration in the grooves and then we're going to highlight the top with gold and then we can choose which one we like the best for our project okay so that base was a rust so i've painted the entire thing with that yeah put that away and then i'm just going to take a little bit of teak wood I'll drop just quickly. Dab that. Just gonna take a little bit, drop it onto my brush, and go out from the center. So the center area is darker. There. Okay. Then again, just take your wet wipe and dab and lightly brush and this is going to remove some of that alcohol ink and you could actually leave the sheet just like this if you wanted to with the um, 
highlighted bit and I might actually so I'm just going to continue rubbing here gently I'm not pressing hard I'm just this the wet wipe has a bit of a grain to it very light grain and so it's going to essentially sand off some of that top part of the alcohol ink and so it's going to expose this pattern and so I might actually just leave it like this instead of putting the gold over the top again as I said we're just kind of experimenting around here and I don't have a set plan I do have an idea of what I want but I haven't you know done the specific project before yeah I definitely like that a lot so you've got the dark moody one and then you've got the almost reverse of it okay so I've got these two and then I'm going to bring over this and see which one it looks best with. Personally, I think it looks best with this one. Yeah, I'll put that off to the side. Definitely looks better with this one. Okay, so now I just want to finish this one off a bit. And those two sheets are going to go together. So this one's finished, so I can just pop this off to the side ready for us to assemble our pendant. I'm just going to quickly wipe up this alcohol ink there we are and I'm going to bring over a tiny brush really small and I'm just going to spray some alcohol here and I'm going to just grab it and I'm going to dab them on So I want this outside area to be a little bit more interesting. Okay, I need to be careful not to make these too big. And I'm actually taking the brush and I'm gently moving it so that as I'm doing this I am removing a little bit of the alcohol ink underneath. So you can see that's quite a bit more interesting than in the other areas. So I'm going to continue doing that until I am happy that it's interesting enough. Okay, so here is what it looks like now that I've finished dotting it. So you can see that looks really nice and it's also metallic so it's a different appearance to it okay and then this one over here was just done on white clay so it doesn't have a metallic appearance so it's going to look a little different compared to this one which is nice so I'll just bring over my tissue blade and I'm just going to move away a few of these alcohol inks there we and I want to cut it fairly close to the lily and this one's already been cut nicely. And I think I want it round about there. And then I'll just gently press that up against the sides. And I use this and press this up against it too. So that we have got those two joined together. So let me just see. I can just paint that a little bit because it's a little bit um on the whiter side of things. So I'll just take a little bit of 99% alcohol, drip a little bit in there, pick up some of that pigment, and then brush along there, and that will make it less white it just appeared very bright to me over there okay Let me just pick this up and bring it over to where you can see now we want to choose our cutters okay so I've decided on this rounded triangle now I haven't quite decided where I want to lie it because I'm not happy with the seam I need to do something about that 
So I'm going to take the trimming that I have had over here, that trimming. I'm just going to move these out of the way. I'm going to take this trimming and I'm just going to kind of squish it together. Okay, and now I'm going to roll. Now I want this nice and thin. Now because we kind of have a rope theme going through our piece as well, because we used a rope to um, to make that lily effect and also because those tree roots also kind of have a ropey sort of effect to them, I'm going to go with kind of a twisted twine sort of effect here. So I'm just busy rolling this as equal as I can. Now I don't want to break it. If I roll too thin I break it so it's a little bit of a juggling act. There you go. Now I'm just gently going to press on it and this is going to flatten it out just a tad. Lift it up and then I'm going to go from one end Start twisting. And actually, I'm going to take my gloves off for this because it's a little fiddly. Put the gloves on because I thought we were going to start assembling the bead, but we're obviously still making little components. So I'll use my fingers here. Here we are. And as we twist it, we're going to create that twine effect. Okay. And carry on twisting. Here we are. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now bring over those sheets. We want this going down the middle. So I'm just trying to get it to look right. Just need a few more twists over here. There we go. Then I'm gently going to pat that down. And that's going to hide our seam, which is what we want at the moment, because the seam didn't look good. Okay, then I can pop my gloves back on, because now that we're going to be assembling the beads, I don't want to get any grit or anything on it. And so I find that wearing gloves works best at this point. Okay, and I'm going to bring over my piece and I'm wondering what angle do I want to have it? Because I want to have enough in here of here that I can see this technique. So I'm just busy moving this around, seeing what it looks like. I want this to be the part from which it hangs. I think I like that part a bit. Maybe if I move this up, no, because I want this bit to actually be the center. Let's see. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pick this up and pop it on something that I can move around so that I can see all of my angles. There we are. And I've just popped it on a piece of paper. Let me just see what this looks like from other angles. I'm thinking that I might hang it like that. So this would be the top part of our pendant and then we have a hole sitting over here. Now I'm wondering whether it should be symmetrical so that this sits perfectly or whether it should be off. Hmm. I'm thinking it should be off. Okay, so I want to get that kind of null tree root area here in the middle. Okay, and then I'm just going to press down. I'm going to move that out of the way. 
way. Now just press this down onto my tile and cut again. I just want to take care of these sides quickly. Just press along the edges to get rid of all these straggly little bits that you're going to have. And I'm not pressing too hard, I'm just kind of sliding along, getting rid of that stuff. Okay, then we want to put a hole in over here. Okay, so now we need to decide what size you want. So I'm going to be using Kemper Cutter Tools. And here's the smallest one, second smallest, third smallest. And I'm thinking I want the third, the one in the middle. So I'm going to check that. And again, I'm thinking I'm going to pop it on a piece of paper so that I can check all of my angles. Oops. Do I want to hang it from there or do I want to hang it from there? That looks quite nice there to be honest. So I'm thinking I might take my smaller, the smallest of the three cutters and center it. Oops. Well that doesn't work, it fell over. <laughs> center it and I'm going to cut. Does that look? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, now I'm gonna place this onto a tile and gently press down, bring over my triangle, round triangle that is, again. I'm just gonna press down, bring over my small circle again. Press down again so that the entire thing is now perfectly symmetrical. always found nerve-wracking because it because I can mess it up there you are so my piece gonna hang like that okay so now I need to do the back so I'm gonna bring over this one these little bits and pieces that we had from before and I'm going to pop that aside and so these are basically just the pieces from um, cutting out a piece and now you can use these later on if you want but I want to use them for my back so I'm just going to pop them all together like that roll that into a ball And then we'll start rolling. Actually, I might stop here because we've got a nice crackle coming out here for some reason. Not sure why. But you could carry on twisting and stuff and then flatten it out. So I'm going to take that to my biggest setting. And I'm going to roll it through. Let's see. Where's my cutter? I need to be able to see. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that. Let me just take it down one more setting. My six. There we go. Okay, 
be able to fit that in quite nicely. Alrighty. I'll just pop that over. Gently press that down. Okay. Pop the cutter over the top. Okay. And bring over my tiny little cutter. Slot that into the hole and cut. Then cut with the other cutter. Now the reason I'm keeping both of these in here at the exact same time is so that it doesn't push in on each other. Because if I just cut here, you'd find that that circle will get distorted. Okay. I'll take them both out. Gonna bring over my blade. Just trim away any bits that don't look right. Because I don't want to smear these edges, I don't want to have to. in any problems so I want to take care of that now so that I can leave them the way they are once sanded. Okay, just busy tapping in these corners and I'll pick that up. I can check now. what the back looks like so it's a nice back it's pretty I'm just gonna gently smooth okay now I do want this to be domed so I'm gonna bring it over my doming surface and now this candle has always been my favorite doming surface so I think I'm gonna use that one today okay, and I'm very gently pressing around there. There we go. I just want to check that I'm happy with that. Make sure that it's stuck well onto your diming surface. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is since these edges are nice and smooth, I'm going to bring over some teak wood. Just move that there. I'm going to bring over some teak wood. Some rust. And some ginger. And I'm going to bring over my teeny tiny brush again. And I'm just going to dab somewhere along there. And I'm going to paint. Along these edges. I'm just going to spray a bit of 99% alcohol in there to make it a little bit more liquidy. There we go. I'm going to paint along those edges. And you want to paint inside there as well because it's just like this big blatant white. Here I am and it doesn't look as good as it could. 
just going to paint up these edges and paint inside that little circle and then I'm going to pop this in the oven for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature and then I can show you what it looks like and we can finish up this project because it will be pretty quick I'm thinking of maybe spraying a matte varnish on it I'm not sure we'll see what it looks like when it comes out the off when it comes out of the oven there you go. so that's the edges so you can see that that's nice and will blend in and I just want to show you how to do inside the um, little circle here because it's a little tricky and this is why you want to make sure that you've stuck down your piece well to your doming surface because you don't want this getting on your back too much doesn't matter if it gets on a little bit but you don't want like pooling in the back okay and this is just going to get rid of all those little white bits that are just showing up One more little white bit there, and one more down there. Okay, and I'm just going to check around these edges to see if I'm happy. Yes, I am. I can quickly get rid of that. And I'll clean that up properly in a little while. But there we are, that's what that looks like. So I'm going to pop that in the oven for a full hour, and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here it is out of the oven. And so the back was fairly shiny and so I just sanded it up till it had a nice satin finish to it. And now what I want to do on the front here is I just want to grab my 400 grit and I just want to sand this part. I don't want to sand over here where the alcohol ink is still exposed. Just want to sand over here and I'm not sanding very hard. I'm just sanding lightly getting rid of any areas where alcohol ink might have splashed and I'm also sanding the top of the little rope here then I'll move on to the next grit and quickly sand and I'm not trying to remove a lot of material I'm just trying to remove enough that I'll be able to get a very uh, light sheen on it so let me just grab the next grit and you'll see how quick it is so I've already sanded the back I'm not going to do the sides because those I've painted already so there's no real need for it. So you can see that it's brightened up that pattern just a little bit. There we go. And I'll brush up over here. Okay, and then I'll just take the lightest one over here. And just rub it over there to just shine it up a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a layer of renaissance wax over the top of this and give it a slight buff. Okay, so here it is now and you can see that it has a nice sheen to it, which is excellent. And here's the back, it's got a bit of a sheen and the sides are nice as well. So I'll just pop that off to dry and in the meantime we can attend to our string. So I'm going to be using some hemp today. And so I'm just going to cut some length. Okay, and this is this really kind of nice um, brown, which I think matches best. Depending on your project, you can use whichever stra string you want. But this is just the one that I'm using. And this is some that I got from Five Mountain Gems a while back came in a set so I'm just cutting a few of those you can see that's nice and light and then I've got some of the tan here which is just a little light and I'm gonna just cut off one of those okay so I decided to just go with two pieces of cord so we just bring those 
over and grab this end pop it down like that and then I'll bring over our bead and bring those loops through and then tie it off okay and I want to just move this around so that it is on the right side of things that needs to be on that side And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, just want to get this loop right. There we go. So you want all of these lines lying nice and even. Okay. And you just want to decide which side you want them on, actually. I want them on that side. There we are. Swapped it around. Always get that one back to front. There we are. So now we've got these two ends. So let me just separate them and I'm going to just take those and you want to trim them so that they are equal length. Okay, and we'll take care of that one in a minute. Then you want to bring over a bead with a large hole. And so I'm just busy using these wood beads. Okay, and string that through. Then I'm just going to bring over a copper jump ring. Slide that on. Yeah. And then I'm going to bring over some E6000. Just let me open that up and get that glue out. I'm just going to use this tool here. Got some glue on that already. Just going to poke it in there. And I'll slide that jump ring on. And I want to be careful with this. A little bit on the tricky side. As I said, tricky. Want to grab these two pieces of cord and I want to pop them through there. There we go, I think that did it. There we go. Okay, and that glue will hold it there. So that's one end, I'll do the same on the other. Okay, so I've done the other side and I've attached the clasp on this side. So now I'm just going to bring over this side, open up the jump ring, pop on the next part of the clasp and close up. And that's basically it really. It's a nice easy way to finish up your pendants. And quite effective too. So that's basically it and now you can see what that pendant looks like and I'm quite happy with it and the way to finishing it off like this is quite nice as well because then you don't have to include metal cordings or anything like that which can, um, it can appear mucky. So that's basically it for this pendant and so let me just bring this up close for you to see what it looks like. You can see there's a nice sheen to it. And this end over here, because we sanded it, also has a nice sheen. And there's what the back looks like. And the sides are quite nice as well. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And I've made a few other ones. Here's a green version. And basically on this side I did a Lisa Bavelka peel. And on this side I repeated what I did here just with green alcohol inks. 
and then I popped some cogs over it and I would now put some resin on it and string it on maybe something like Kamihima. So you can see here that there's a little bit of a hole there for me to put um, some sort of a bale through or to put my cord through. So that's another one that I made and here's another one which I'm quite happy with and this one again is the same green um, fabric lily effect but on this side instead of using a leaf with velcro peel I used a sheet of black clay and then used some uh, silver stays on ink on Lisa Bavelka's love letter stamp and stamped that onto the black clay and so that's what's happened over here and then instead of taking a rope and twisting it to hide the seam I've done these little holes which I thought looked quite nice and it adds to the design so that's basically what I've done so it's a little bit of an extra bit so hopefully that will inspire you to try out some different colours and maybe some different designs because there's basically just an endless uh, list of things that you could do with this because it's a really cool fun technique that is quite versatile. So I do hope that that tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know as that is always helpful to me and I enjoy hearing what you guys think and please do send me photos if you do try this project out. I love seeing what you guys come up with. They always so interesting to see because you guys have completely different ideas to what I have and so it's always inspirational to see what you guys do. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.